That chance of rain and turning to snow continues into the evening. It's going to be cold at night for us under mostly cloudy skies. Southwest winds throughout the day and evening at 15 to 25 miles an hour. Highs near 50 today, near 20 tonight here in the Cedar City area. And St. George with highs in the mid-60s. And lows tonight should be in the lower 30s. Utah Jazz survived a late game rally from Detroit to defeat the Pistons 117-105 in Salt Lake City last night. Donovan Mitchell led the way with 32 points for the Jazz, followed by Boyan Bogdanovich's 18 points to lead the Jazz to victory. The Jazz are now 16-5, first place in the Western Conference, game ahead of the Clippers and the Lakers. They're on the road tomorrow against the Hawks in Atlanta. That's sports. I'm, I'm glad that we just call it Wired Wednesdays, and I don't have that written down in, in, in front of me, uh, MJ. Yes. Because uh, I'm worried that I, I glance and say, oh, it's Weird Wednesday. But no, it's Wired Wednesday. It is Wired okay. Wednesday. Good morning. It's McKenna Hansen with Farm Bureau Financial Services. Welcome to Wired Wednesday, keeping this community connected. Today in studio, we have Diana Jensen with Polarity Design Team. And just a quick note on the prior news that I came into masks in the national park yes wasn't it determined that masks during an an activity like a strenuous activity was more harmful than than good those are the wrong facts you have to go with the oh, right you facts. gotta go with the approved, the approved science science science, yeah. to oh is that okay so i'm missing the i need the approved science yes. list yeah. rather than the, the okay okay all right well I am grateful that I experienced Zion She's National speechless. Park um, many, many years before all of the interestingness that it has since become. You know, I got the old guy pass that lets me go into the parks for free. Uh, nice. I'm going to be putting that on my shelf now. I'm just saying, man, I don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, and visiting, like, even Cedar Breaks, you know, you would have to do that. And... To me, if you went there right now, your mask would freeze to your face and you couldn't breathe. My 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 favorite thing that I think is going to happen, they're going to say, we well, you know those highway, those interstate highways, that's federal property. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, so Lord. you better have your mask on as you drive to Beaver. No. Get your cheese. <laughs> Dr. T, <Chi, laughs> don't. Oh, no. I, I don't even want to think. I did. I'm, I am speechless. I have no idea what what the world is becoming or isn't becoming. Anyways, on a happier note, we're gonna talk about marketing. Why market? Why there's marketing ideas that fail out there, how to correct them, and how to get better marketing out there. There are, you know, one thing that I've been really impressed with Polarity Design in working with my own stuff is, I literally text and call Diana. Yes. And I'm like, what do we do with this? This is an idea. Is it a good idea or is it not? And we go through those ideas of, well, what, what's your goal with it? You know, what do you want to communicate with it? Tell me about some other companies you've dealt with besides, you know, boring insurance that you've gone through <laughs> and helped. And you really, like Orange Peel comes to mind just because you have some of their branding material in, in the office. Orange Peel? Orange peel, yes. <laughs> and how how they came to you and you worked with their teams in correcting what was going on. All right, um, very specific example. I love it. Um, it really it helps me like actually like jog my memory. Be like, okay, this is how I can help other companies do this. Um, so Orange Peel is a wonderful smoothie shop down in St. George. We love the owners there, good Annette Graff. Wonderful, wonderful people, and they had a need of a graphic designer that could work with them on an as-needed basis with a quick turnaround. And so we fill that role for them. We also help them strategize things where if they're like, hey, we need to do a window cling coming up in spring. These are some of the ideas we have. We help brainstorm ideas for what the marketing message is going to be. And then we take care of getting the prints done, like ordered. We drive down to St. George, we install, we take care of everything for our clients or the full service graphic and web design agency. Awesome. So with Orange Peel, what have been, so they're a very unique drink. Mm -hmm. And when I first went there, it's been a few years ago, that when I went in, they covered the drink. It was a sealed lid. I didn't know how to drink it. Mm -hmm. it and how, how did you help them communicate how to actually utilize that lid to their advantage? 
So funny story with that actually. Um, one of the first design projects I did for them was a poster on how to pop, uh, was the message of the poster because unfortunately there was an instant where dry cleaning had to be paid for because someone wasn't quite sure how to open up their smoothie lid because you don't peel it, you gotta use the sharp end of it, it makes a really unique pop sound. Yeah, so we were able to create a really <laughs> fun, visually engaging poster on this is how you use your straw and pop. Nice, so we popped the lid. <laughs> Which is perfect. So with that, what other companies have you worked with or what other companies do you see out there that need to be worked with? Like either market specific or kind of the message that they're created is a little bit um, confusing to others or that you've seen confusing. Um, that's an excellent question. Um, to that, I would say the biggest role that we fill is companies who aren't able to have those graphic designers or web designers on staff. And so what happens is we end up with owners who are doing their own graphic and web design. And there are some that are great. Like, I'm not going right. to dog on anybody. There are some that are great that utilize Canva or things like that. And they are able to capture their brand's image and create engaging marketing materials. However, there are other times where it would probably be more beneficial for the business owner to be able to work on what they're good at. It's probably not a good idea for someone who does plumbing to be on Canva when he could be out making money fixing toilets and right. things like that. Doing, um, going to their strengths. I know that I'm not right. a strong, I mean, I can kind of use um, Publisher. Like, that's a really old, like, absolute, like, I know how to cut and paste and, like, turn the images. Mm -hmm. That's the extent and of it. And in a pinch, you know, and if people are trying to save money, I, I don't blame them. But, yes, yeah. but to make a consistent brand message, or a, can, or a very professionally done, I mean, we did door hangers for me the other day, mm -hmm. and it has, it even has the show, Dr. T. It says, make sure you turn in, tune in Wired Wednesdays. All right, that was cool. So, I mean, it's a door hanger, so we'll see what the turnaround is, really. But in designing that, I knew what I wanted on it, and I could have thrown a Word document together and, like, I printed it and cut and pasted the literal pages. Mm -hmm. I'm really good at scrapbooking, you know, with cutting and pasting, literally. But designing that like all on the computer, it's it's so intimidating now because there's so many different platforms. You have Adobe Professional or Photoshop or something, and then it creates layers and, and things. It's almost as bad as doing the, you know, back in 2002, I think, is when Call of Duty originally came out. Maybe it was 2004. My friends would invite me over. I mean, this is how inept I am in, in anything electronic. They would use me as target practice because like no longer are you moving forward and backwards and side to side you have like this drift thing going on and i don't even know you got your both x and y axes that you've got to use your joysticks for yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i would be used as target practice so i'm gratefully you know i'm grateful that i've hired polarity design in doing all that for me because you guys really add a true element to that and and make it so much better and i give you guys ideas and you take and run with them and then i'm like Yes, this is exactly what I knew I needed without me having to go through the hours, the painstaking hours of publisher and and moving things around. And that's hours taken away from business you could be doing with your clients. Yes. So with that, what would be the top three things that people are underutilizing in marketing right now? Oh, goodness gracious. That's so industry specific that that's well, a tough one to answer. Everybody's using social media right now. Everyone is using social media. If they're not, they should be. Yes. So where, like, is print advertising dead? No. Absolutely not. Um, you can still leave a lasting impression with your business card. When you go to a networking event and you're speaking with other people, your business card, depending on what kind of stock it on, is it have raised spot UV? Is there foil on it? We've got plastic business cards, metal business cards. How is that going to leave a lasting impression with the person you just met to hopefully encourage them to do business with you moving forward? Right. Well, and I was talking to somebody, he lives in my neighborhood and, and whatnot, but he used to give out wooden die cuts oh, like right. as his business cards. And years later, people are finding them in, his junk, in their junk drawer and they're calling him, hey, do you still offer these services? He's like, no, I shut that business down 15 years ago. So, I mean, just though the, the lasting impression that little different types of like the, the hard plastic and or the metal business cards would leave 
with those types of respective people that you want to do business with. Mm -hmm. With with that, do you think with window cleans? I have a window clean on my vehicle. Do you encourage business owners to have those like in advertising? I mean, we're driving vehicles around anyways. Yes, your vehicle is actually a moving business card for you all the time. Danger is like, please don't cut anybody off or else they might. You know, not right, yeah. They know exactly where to go. Exactly. Right. You're like, hey, that guy. So <laughs> that leverage girl. to a minimum. <laughs> right, so just make sure you're driving good. But, um, but yeah, if you've got decals on your back window, that is going to be in front of people all the time. Even when you're in the parking lot at the grocery store, people are going to be like, oh my gosh, they do homemade jewelry. Snap a picture of your back window, and you maybe would have never met that person face-to-face -face to give them your business card, but now they know you are out there and that you exist. Right. Well, and I feel like those those instances, like I see some vehicles that are like completely, I don't know, covered with different decals. Like you have all the different panels and whatever else. And it's really attractive. Like I'm like, oh wow, they took a lot of time for that. And then I'm like, the price point. The price point for that would be like so, you know, in the thousands of dollars in my brain, right? right. Again, very limited, very limited um, price bid, price point things for marketing in my in my own business. But when I came to meet you guys, I was pleasantly surprised that the window cleaning was well within my budget. Mm -hmm. So when you meet with business owners, are you finding that that's where where they're not not confused like I am, you know, necessarily, but they're pleasantly surprised at the cost or the lack of cost that's there. I would say so, yeah. Um, we actually operate business in a very similar way in that the same way you take a big picture for your clients and say, this is everything that I can offer you, and now you're like, hey, what actually do you need? Yes. We're yes, really so similar in that, yeah. that regard. Um, so we like to let our clients know, like, okay, well, if you want a full wrapped vehicle decal, this is what we got for you. If their price is like, oh, that's a little out of my budget, it's, okay, well, what if we just did half of a wrap? Or what if we just did window perf on your back window? How can we make this work for you? Because we do work for our clients. It's our job to make them look good and look the part and make sure that they're happy and that we stick with their budget as well. Right, which is, is so beneficial now, especially with all the different... I feel like there's so many clickbait marketing things out there, you know, uh, order a window proof here and this is your make and model vehicle and self install here and it's the same price as calling you guys, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't have to deal with the frustration of self install of a big sticker on a huge window. Not that like I drive like a huge vehicle, but it's definitely bigger than my arms can reach. Right. right. Like and it's a two man job. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Two man. And then you have like the angles and the, you know, it's well beyond my skill set. So a click clickbait to me for any type of marketing is so intimidating because I don't want to have to pay for something <clears throat> and pay for something and then have it come and be like, oh well, by the way, this doesn't work, right? Because it's non-returnable because it's a custom yes. feature. Yes. So what happens if you get everything ordered, you you present it to the client, and something didn't come out right? We fix it. No questions asked. No cost to the customer. So you're a customer service, customer oriented based Always. business, which is so, so vital in this community, I feel like, because in all of those, you know, different regards to that, you, you really, at the end of the day, you want their business to be better with their market, the strength of their marketing material. And it shows a lot about you and your, and you and Trent in going through that process with a business owner and or other small businesses and, you know, major businesses in the area. Because you guys truly care, and you want it designed, and you want it to come out as accurate as possible. Of course. What would you say is the best first marketing material? Again, I know, I'm sorry, I keep, I'm a broken record, but it depends on the no, industry. No, I agree, I agree, you're good, you're um, good. What's going to work for a smoothie shop is not going to work for a plumber, and so... Really what it is, is we love the business owners to come in and sit down with us. First consultations are always free, and you can take as much of our time as you want, really. I mean, within reason, right? Right, right, right. Um, but we want to really get to know you and your why behind your business, to learn what your vision is for the future of your business. And then we can really dive in and be like, okay, so if this is your target market, maybe we should do every door direct mailers. 
or a better option for you would be having a nice rat card that you can go do grassroots marketing and leave behind with businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's really deciding like, how are you wanting to present yourself to your potential customers and how can we best help you do that and make sure that you look really good visually doing it. Not only with the graphics, but we're gonna make sure that you're gonna have like the best sock paper, um, nice coatings, like. So it stands out. Yes. It doesn't just get filed away. Right. So we have, I would say, Tim, how many different business industries do we have in this area? Oh, I've, I've done lots. <laughs> so many. I would say infinite number. I'm not quite sure we're there yet because we don't have a Costco. Oh, sorry. We oh, right. No <laughs> Costco or Target. Target, you know, that. <laughs> so with, let's say, we have restaurants, uh, construction, and hotels. Let's narrow it down to those. Okay. Those are pretty, everybody needs them, mm -hmm. you know, at some point or another. And I'm lumping in construction with all of the, the handy people out there, the individuals that do side work, you know, those kinds of things out there. If I'm just a part-timer, you know, let's say tile layer, I can't afford a lot, but I want to get out to the other bigger general, you know, contractors to know that I pick up side work. I pick up, you know, what you can, what you don't have time to get to, or super custom jobs. What would you say the the first marketing material I would need to make a standing impression? For sure, we're going to want either some kind of a business card or a wrap card. A wrap card is just like your standard like four by nine postcard. Okay. Kind of material. It's front and back. It's usually printed on a nice card stock. The reason we love rat cards is because it's similar to a business card in that it's the leaf behind, but you've got a lot bigger canvas that you can say, this is exactly what I do. And you can also leave pictures of your work to where if you're leaving them with general contractors, they can be like, oh my gosh, look at this. Right. Whereas with a business card, in that regard, it would be like, okay, well, does this guy have a website listed on his business card? Now he can go to your website to look up stuff. But if it's just on the rat card that he can see right then and there, which I feel like general contractors would be like this right right now right like, like I want to what know you got what, yeah uh -huh, mm -hmm. exactly I feel like that could be a really good option okay so then I'm new to town I don't know what's here I want to go out to eat how do we get those restaurants into the new homes oh my goodness that that's where I feel like we could definitely work with real estate agents okay if they just sold a home maybe let's leave behind um, a little trifle brochure of welcome to the neighborhood we're so happy you're here these are the places that we love Okay. Um, that falls on the real estate agent instead of the restaurant, but maybe that's something that a restaurant could be like, hey, these are the top selling agents okay. in town. How can we partner together to bring us both new business? Wait, you're saying create synergistic relationships? Yes, crazy, right? <laughs> no way. In Little Old Cedar City. Mm -hmm. There's so much potential for that. There's so many different connections. I mean, even just on my, on my phone and whatnot, I have a few different contacts that I'm going to call and be like, Hey, so did you hear the radio show? Because we need to do this. Right. And and creating that, you know, kind of trifold or front to back or whatever, I'm gonna say Iron County Essentials. You Somebody know who's actually really, really great at this is Griffles. They have preferred partners that if you take your Griffles card from Donating Plasma, use it at those businesses, those businesses offer you discounts. Oh, interesting. So great cross promotion. That's huge. And and in little old Iron County, I mean, we're making a big impact, you know, nationwide especially through different avenues, but little old Iron County needs to get back together. We need to, we need to start the mom and pop shops getting noticed and recognized because we have all the locals there, but we want to, we want to engage and we want to embrace, you know, everybody moving in. So many people moving in. So many. How, Chris, do you know the statistics on how many, how much we've grown in the last, I don't know, four years, five years? You're talking about just overall population? Uh-huh. Uh, -huh. uh no, I haven't seen any solid numbers for a long time, but the last I saw a couple of years ago, it was like 5 6%. Growth. Growth. That's huge. That, that's big. I mean, that's, I would say that's 5,000 people yeah. over the last five years. Mm -hmm. That's how many more new homes? I mean, that's, that's individual households, not just people. Yeah. Right. It's just households. That's, you know, and then you say, you know, two to five people in any household. That's a lot of population increase. There's a lot of information that we have here that we need to get, I don't know, out there somehow. And so with Polarity Design and the Jensen's, you can, you can go to them and 
you know, for any type of business, whether you're a real estate agent, just getting started, whether you're a seasoned real estate agent, you know, seasoned restaurant, new startup restaurant, any of these things and going to them and being like, this is what we need or this is what we think we need. What do you guys think? And with their background, you guys have been combined over 15 years of over experience, 20. over 20 years of experience in different marketing industries, marketing through the Wasatch Front all the way down to little Iron County, mm -hmm. which is huge. So Diana, how do we get a hold of you? So you can go to our website, www.polaritydesignteam.com. You can also reach us on our office phone, which is 435-592-9098, or shoot us an email at info at polaritydesignteam.com. Which is a great way to get contact with you. Thank you so much for being on today and going through different marketing and problem solving ideas because it's one of those things that everybody talks about, but there's little action on. And I feel like we need to get out there and make the action, you know, to help our local business owners. And that's what we're here for. We love it. We love our job. Perfect. Thank you so much. This has been McKenna Hansen with Wired Wednesday, sponsored by Farm Bureau Financial and Polarity Design Team. This has been a great Wednesday, and hopefully everybody stays. Uh, you know, we should probably look. I, oh, yes, my me, contact. Forgive me for being crazy <laughs> and maybe trying to market you on this ancient radio thing. Yes, but, no. Uh, I, <laughs> this is McKenna Hansen, your local Farm Bureau financial agent. You can reach me at 435-592-2021. I'm your local Farm Bureau financial agent serving all of Southern Utah. Thank all right. you. We'll see you next week, MJ. All right.